Hi and welcome to my class on QGIS. This course is designed to give people a basic intro to quantum GIS for those that may not have ex been exposed to it before. Quantum GIS is an open source GIS and you can find more about it at QGIS.org. I also have courses available on planetazen.com that go through various exercises. The idea for this course is to introduce you to basic things that you may not know if you've never used a geographic information system software before. Let's go click download and learn how to download QGIS. We're going to end up on this QGIS webpage. The main advantage to QGIS is that it's available on the Mac OS. You'll want to download the GDAL Complete Framework 1.0 1.10 is the most recent version. You need to download that first and then go through various packages that will be required to run operations using geographic information system. Truly with Quantum GIS it's a brilliant software but loading the software is half of the problem or half of the challenge of getting running with it. Uh, first we'll click this and you'll see here that it's downloading. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load this up and we'll get be off and running but I'll go through the order right now first we're going to download uh, the 1.10 complete framework this is the complete framework and then we will go through uh, these uh, GDAL packages uh, so we'll uh, the GDAL framework after that um, and then each of these packages will load separately uh, they all are Python related scripts that accomplish different things for example uh, the geo PDF allows us to deal with raster files Mr. Sid allows us to deal with uh, Sid files from uh, the US Department of Geological Services so um, that's a basic thing I'm gonna uh, load all these up you can see here that I've um, I can open that now um, and I'll see here I'll, I'll click on GDAL complete um, key thing to remember on the Mac OS with if you're running uh, Mavericks or higher um, you're gonna get this error don't freak out it's not that you can't open it. You need to right click and say open. Why Macintosh does this to you, I'm not clear. So you click open, open. But this is kind of the challenge that I'm working with this. We'll continue through. You're going to do this uh, for this framework as well as this uh, numpy uh, Python. So it's a numeric Python script. And then uh, each of these uh, uh, GDAL 1.0 uh, frameworks. So. I'm going to step off, uh, then we'll just give a brief orientation to the software, and that'll conclude this lesson, which I hope just provides you that have never experienced GIS before, um, just a snapshot so you can move forward further uh, with other uh, spatial analysis tools. I wanted to come back. I've loaded this uh, complete framework uh, now. Um, which is kind of the standalone piece, and you'll notice, uh, you'll notice um, that I've loaded both. Uh, you'll see that if you look in the fine print here, it says the GDAL plugins are not, and other extras are not included, but the num uh, py is. So we don't necessarily have to do that, but I ran it anyways just to play it safe. Um, what we're going to do, um, each of these individual frameworks is loaded, but this GDAL framework right here is not. So we're going to load that. I've already downloaded it. Um, and uh, once we get each of these loaded, then we'll be ready to rock and roll. So let's get started with the basic taskbar up here. Here we have a little bit about QGIS. If you click on that, you'll get your versioning uh, and all the different information about the developers that run the site. Um, behind that, we have our typical open commands. Um, some edit commands and you'll notice when we did our regular build you end up with a number of different features to actually reshape different files that we'll import here um, different views we'll talk a little more about that um, um, the idea of adding layers settings the plugins and we just loaded a bunch of components that really function as plugins and it's important to talk about this right now because QGIS is set up such that uh, each of these plugins or scripts, Python scripts, um, they form different activities and you can find different other activities in here. For example, if I want to find um, a, an aerial
So we'll close this up right now. Likewise, we have some analysis tools. This is where we do our basic uh, analysis with G GIS software with QGIS. Um, uh, database manager, which we can actually d develop uh, uh, geo databases and we can actually manage that here. Uh, and then uh, zoom and bring the window to the front and that will help. Um, so let's talk about the actual uh, toolbar rather than that, that top toolbar um, down here. Um, here we have our tool pane. Each of these becomes active as we bring things into our uh, viewfinder here, which is this area right in here. And you can see here at the bottom that as we scroll around in here, we're actually going in space. You see here there's, there's coordinates down here that make up not only our um, location in space, but also can, we can set our various scales. Uh, you see there. Um, this right here is where we get into the concept of multiple layers of information. The idea of the lay layer cake scenario. Um, in ArcGIS, this is called the table of contents. We just call that simply layers in QGIS. Let's just click here and add a layer. So you'll see we get this pop up here. If we click browse, and I already have it set up to bring in some, um, some data I have from the Louisville, Kentucky area. I'm going to click on this Metro Council shape uh, and click open. And you'll see it'll bring in uh, different pieces there. Um, and then I'm also going to um, bring in add a vector layer, browse. Um, let's find my recent areas and um, bring in this. Uh, this other Jefferson County layer. And this is Jefferson County, Kentucky. Now you'll see here that I have a number of different features and I can identify what these are by clicking um, on this identify feature. Um, I can see here and I'm clicking on the top layer um, and these are would be population characteristics. Um, you see the area, um, the all, all the different background information um, that is displayed uh, there. I can also change the display, and this is a powerful tool of GIS um, and the nomenclature over here. Um, so let's just uh, double click on this attribute right here, or this um, thing here in our table of contents or in our layer scenario, and you'll see here that I have a lot of different options here. And under the general tab, I can actually change the naming of it. So I'm going to call this Jefferson County, Kentucky. And I'm actually, since Jefferson County is actually Louisville, Kentucky, I'm just going to um, add Louisville to the front of that. Okay, see here I have um, all my different specifications there. Um, I have my fields there, and you'll see that... Um, my population here um, is my first feature, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the way this is represented to be represented by P01, which in our um, census table is our uh, top population feature. And I'm just going to say, this is categorized, I'm going to say classify. And you'll see here I get a number of different um, categories. I'm going to actually change that to graduated symbol. Um, just wasn't totally thinking there. And I'm going to uh, not shape area. That would just be land area. I'm going to change it to population. And if we, it'll just work with me here. P01. Um, okay. There we go. All right. So if I could classify, it should show up. And I'm going to change this to, so we get some uh, gradation here. Let's go to seven classes. Um, or not 78, how about seven? Uh, and then let's change the coloring scheme to being a nice, um, maybe uh, red to green um, color ramp. And... Um, Or we actually let's try let's try this. There we go. That's that's a little better. 
so we see here we have um, based on population we have a lot of different and we can identify and see what those are um, I'm gonna take out this layer now if I right click and click remove you see I get a lot of options here when I right click uh, I can take that out now I want to bring in a different layer so there's two layers gonna bring in um, and these are layers I got from the Census Bureau uh, and I click browse um, let's just uh, browse and again this uh, this uh, folder I've already made on the economic conditions in Louisville Kentucky and I'm going to click here and got two different options here so these are points with regard to businesses in Jefferson County or Louisville Kentucky in the uh, in 2011 and 2003 and what I'm doing is I'm trying to show uh, change over time and you'll see here that when the points come in which uh, it appears I'm going to turn this layer off. Um, when the points come in, they're uh, shaped like this. Now, curiously, what I want to do, and I can pan around with this hand feature, um, I've already made a different type of file. And since this is just an intro, I'm going to talk about two different types of files adding a raster layer. And so in this folder, I've already made a raster layer than that. And obviously, the difference with a raster layer and a um, a point-based layer is that one is vector and one is raster. And so here we can add a, a really a graphic that actually, and we click the wrong fire, file, a graphic that sh represents the, uh, the density of this. So um, if I click here on thermals, we should get uh, an OK there. And you'll see here that what it is is it's added uh, a heat map of that information that shows kind of where uh, the geographic distribution of that information is. That's about all we're going to do as part of this. Um, we can go to um, a calculator and actually do some calculations based on that raster. Um, we can also do some uh, buffering and data management. Um, those are kind of the next step. So for example, um, doing some analysis in terms of um, different things on here. I, I use a lot of these tools, Buffer, Intersect, Union, for suitability analysis, and you can find more of that on a course I offer in planazen.com um, or in some classes I take if you go to Cal Poly. Um, but that's about it for now, and uh, we're going to transition over. If you are not familiar with ArcGIS, um, I'm going to show the same type of exercise in ArcGIS just to familiarize people with the layout and how to operate in it. Uh, until then, uh, God bless, Godspeed, and hopefully see you again.